Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy. Today our expert trainer will be discussing about OCI fundamental blocks and network components. So watch the video till the end. Let's see the fundamental blocks of OCI. So OCI is basically designed. So you will see that, you know, uh, there is a geographical locations where uh, you know or which Oracle decide that okay they are going to open their data center so first they go ahead and say that okay this is going to be in Australia or maybe say in Hyderabad or Mumbai so that is going to be say the region so if I say talk about Australia Australia has got two or three regions okay one is in Melbourne another one is in Sydney so these are like regions which are there Okay, if, if I take an example of say India, India has got two data centers. One is in Mumbai and one is in Hyderabad and both are two different regions. Okay, so it doesn't depend upon the country, but that is how the region has been defined. So these regions are there where Oracle is going to have their data centers, which are known as an availability domain. So it can have uh, up to three data centers or it can have either one data center. Okay, so right now Oracle is creating the regions with the single data center. Okay, but Oracle has got four regions in which they have got three data centers as well, like your Frankfurt, Ashburn, London, and Phoenix, these are four regions where you are going to see multiple data centers are available in that region. Okay, but apart from that, yes, a single data center is also uh, there. The, all others are basically the single data center. Now, in these data centers, you are going to see the fall domain. Now, what is fall domain? Fall domain is basically a, a logical data center within the data center okay has got a separate power supply separate uh, uh, hardware okay no dependency there so in case if suppose you have got an hardware issue there these fault domains are basically used to recover your data but yes these fault domains are all maintained and controlled by oracle you don't have any control over it from the console or so. Okay, and each availability domain or say the data center has got three fault domains in it. Okay, now why I am covering it here is basically this is most basic information which you need to have it when you are designing the deployment of Oracle application and the databases. Okay, so say you want to define and design it for the high availability and the disaster recovery then this is going to be your basic okay from here you are going to start that okay i'm going to select say one region okay if i say talk about uh, uh, say india only so i have selected hyderabad as one my uh, deployment region but what about the high availability i have got various other data centers uh, you know available but my another restriction comes that my data should not go outside the country now in that case my choice only remains this mumbai where i can deploy my dr instance okay now just to let you know whenever within the same country oracle is going to open multiple regions they, they basically go with the systemic zone as well they consider that so both the data centers are in the different systemic zones. So that is going to, uh, you know, give you a protection against in case if the earthquake is there, then that is going to give you protection over that. That is where you are going to plan for the DR, right? So those points are considered and that is how the regions are finalized by the cloud vendors. So in that case, you, you need to consider and see that okay whether my data I have what kind of restriction and requirement you have and that is where you are going to uh, select the regions and then within the region then 
comes your availability domain or say the data center so what all services are there so in usually all the services are uh, you know provided in all the data centers but yes some services are uh, you know are not available uh, you know at the same time or say not that uh, fast it is going to be available maybe down the line it is going to get implemented in all the data centers and the services will be provided so you need to check that too and yes when you are designing it you know, say you know your compute instances or your databases when you are provisioning it make sure that you are selecting different fault domains so that you can get one layer of security from the hardware failure from the power failure at the data center so that is where the designing part comes so if you see a closer look this is say my availability domains in that availability domains so this is my regions so region 1 region 2 region 3 and regions i have got an availability domain and if you see the enlarged picture this is going to have all the services which is deployed within the availability domains now these availability domains are interconnected but not dependent they are not doing any kind of hardware resource sharing or any kind of resource sharing but they are connected with the high bandwidth and low latency network okay but in case say tomorrow my one data center is down it is not going to affect the other two okay maybe due to any glitch or due to any uh, you know power failure or any anything it happens the other two data centers will not be affected okay these data centers are uh, around 35 to 50 miles apart not more than that within the same region and regions are basically you know uh, they, they are uh, countries apart they can be country apart so within the data center within the region or whatever data centers are there uh, availability domain they are just 35 to 50 miles that is the range and they are all connected with a high bandwidth and low latency network without any resource sharing and these uh, data centers have got your uh, fault domains in it yeah so this is about like the availability domain so they are isolated they are fault tolerant no hardware sharing each availability domain is independent of other data centers okay well, whatever your data centers are there so that is where in case in my one data center is down other two will not be affected with that again within the same region multiple data center down is a rare thing right and this is where the fault domain comes into picture so you can see here like, like these whatever is there four i have mentioned they have got uh, uh, multiple data centers and each has got three fault domains in it so say if these uh, say phoenix which has got three data centers it has got nine fault domains all together which you can select and this is within the data centers okay like fault domains are within the data centers but they are having a different power supply they are uh, not sharing any hardware okay with the mainstream so they are a separate track which gives you a you know one layer of security against the failure or whatever your uh, you know hardware failure or anything occurs fall domain gives you uh, the protection against that so when say you are creating your compute instance for the application deployment or you are creating your databases here you you are seeing these data centers are available right uh, fall domains are available and you just need to select your fall domains within that so that is that is the basic about the uh, the fundamental blocks of OCI right so when say you are designing your HA and DR then yes you need to have like if you want to have a data center protection then you need to select a region which has got multiple availability domains or uh, you you can def uh, deploy it across the region which gives you a protection against the region failure my say one region failed my another two regions are there where the data is replicated and that that is going to save me from the failure 
right so that that is you need to consider on your ha and the dr design part that okay what i should select and how i should design and how i should create it okay the network component so now the architecture deployment which you are seeing is a typical uh, uh, you know architecture deployment a very basic one in which you can see on the you know i, I have used various uh, networking components of oci for deploying my uh, my architecture so i have used the network vcn then i have break that network into multiple subnets so here is basically the private subnet in which i have deployed the application and the database and there is a public subnet in which i have the load balancer and then via bastion host or bastion service i will be using to make the connections to the private subnet because if you see here the private subnet is the one where you you know which doesn't have the public access okay and if you want to connect it from your on-prem okay using the ip address then yes you need to have a secure connectivity between the two data centers right the if you see on the left hand side here my on-premise data center is there and i have created the public uh, say the sub private subnet here now how i'm going to connect it unless and until i don't have the connectivity between these two data centers so i need to have a vpn right in general like you are most of you are like say working from home in that case what you do you dial to your cisco vpn or sophos vpn or whatever vpn is there you connect to that and once you connect to your vpn you will see that you have got a private ip address to your machine along with the public ip right and that is where you are going to connect to your machines with the private ip 10.0.1.3 something those kind of ips you are going to give it so what happens in that that means you are now connected to the to your office data center you have you are into that network and you have got the private connectivity between the your end and the data center and then you are connecting to it you are accessing uh, you know the entire infrastructure so the same way you need to have the connectivity to the ip addresses uh, you know which are going to get allocated to this database and to this application and in networking you know depending upon like what what you need okay like suppose i need to download few patches on these two uh, machines where one is the database and one is an application i want to download some patches or maybe the yum updates i need it but this is in the private subnet then to access to the internet i need to have something and that is where the nat gateway comes into picture okay my load balancer if you see here this is in the public subnet so that is going to be you know um, accessible via public subnet means via public network i don't need anything else there i can directly access it with via internet and this is where my url is going to be there and backend it is going to connect to various servers maybe to the application or to the database now mostly load balancer we use it for an application it is going to pass that connection to the application node now this my application uh, can be single or multiple uh, whatever it can be depending on my requirement of high availability or so i have deployed it so that way there are various networking components which are used okay we are going to have a look of these networking component in our coming session the next one we are going to define that we are going to have that look as well but yes this is how a typical architecture uh, deployment architecture from the networking point of view it looks like like if, if you see here the ports okay i'm not opening all the ports at any point of time even for this load balancer also whatever the port is going to be there i'm going to open that port only for accessing it So that is how you can uh, you know even secure your uh, deployments as well right so these are like if you see the high level 
uh, uh, you know networking components on the OCI side like if you see the VCN VCN it supports like slash 16 to slash 30 Okay, slash 30 is going to be my smallest network and slash 16 is going to be my biggest network again. That is editable Then you have got the subnet either the public or the private Then you have got the routing table to Transfer the traffic outside the network then you need to have a routing table like you want to route the traffic outside the your your network you need to define it in the route table and direct that traffic then you have got a uh, various uh, routers which are there like your uh, internet gateway so this that is basically one router which is going to allow the bi-directional traffic to the public network then you you have got uh, the nat gateway which is nothing but the unidirectional that means from outside you will not be able to get accessed but you will be able to access internet on your machines so that is nat gateway then you have got a, a service gateway sgw which is basically used for transferring or accessing the services securely within the oci Okay, like suppose if I want to transfer the backup to the object storage I, I can uh, you know I have an option to do it um, uh, You know over the public network, but that is not going to be secured So Oracle gives you the service gateway which basically uses the Oracle internal fabric internal network for transferring this so securely you can transfer it So that is basically via service gateway then you have got a dynamic routing gateway if you want to connect between the two data centers then if you want to connect two networks inter which are within the region then you have got a local peering gateway and then you have got a remote uh, remote peering connectivity rpc if it is in the different region so again networks connectivity between the region like you know for the hn the dr deployments or say if you want to connect a standby database from primary and the standby is in the different region then yes you need to have this network two network should communicate first that connectivity you need to develop and then once that is developed then you can uh, you know perform your activity then for the security side you have got the security list you have got the network security groups to maintain your traffic ingress and in, uh, incoming and outgoing and you have got the VPN connectivity and the fast connect option for connecting between the two data centers. So this is the uh, you know networking portfolio of the OCI. So guys, this was our expert from Team K21 Academy. And if in case you have some doubts and queries, then we have something really special for you. We have our free class on how to become Oracle Cloud Architect for certification and higher paying jobs. So in this interactive session, we will be discussing about why you must learn Oracle Cloud, OSA architecture, network connectivity and core services, our eight week roadmap, plus 30 plus hands on labs to go from complete beginner to the expert level. So all you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash OCI02. You'll be seeing this kind of page. Just click on book your free seat now. Select your event date, add your name, your email address, your phone number, and click on yes, save my seat. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of link. All you have to do is just save this link, add it to your calendars, and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, keep learning.